getting back to the original question about range, I was told something, and you don't know this, I was told something this morning which sounded astonishing. So I had to try it out. I am now about 40 yards from the back of my car and the central locking is still working fine. But if I go back another 10 or 15 yards to say here, we're out of range. However, if I put the key against my head like so and try again, <laughs> it's working! Doesn't work like that. Does work. What have I done to my head? <laughs> it does work. It, it doubles the range, pretty much. It doubles the range that it works using your head. Do you have to have your mouth open? No, it's just like a big amplifier. I, it's I just scary. don't get that. If you've got the faintest idea how that works, please write to us. Let's get on to some of our viewers' letters. Now, you may remember, last week, we discovered that if you hold your car's remote control central locking device against your head, it doubles its range, OK? Mm. Now, we didn't understand that. No. There was a girl in the audience last week who was a scientist, and she said it had to do with the fillings in your teeth. Yeah, but we tested that. We, we did. The, our producer um, deigned to come into work one day, Which and nice. he has no fillings in his teeth, and it worked for him, so it isn't that. Mm. Um, loads of people have written to us, and all we've been able to discover is that uh, no scientists watch Top Gear. No, that much is clear. <laughs> Not one. Uh, there's a chap here who says the reason is it's because your body acts like a grounding plane, which sounds good, it sounds a, a sort of plausible explanation, but then you read on and he's got a, 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 a GSXR 1000, which I, I believe... That was brilliant! Yeah. He's a biker, sound fellow, I believe. And lots of people think it is your body that does it. A uh, guy here, Craig from Bromley, reckons it's because your body has iron in it. Well... well I mean, it does, but a tiny bit. I have no iron in my body. I am pure fat. <laughs> yeah, I am just fat from here down. Well, fat and hair. What I say is, it's nice to be consistent. I am. Yeah. yeah. There's a chap here called Zunkan at America Online, and he says it's human bones, a great amplifier of radio waves, and it's something to do with your elbows. <laughs> no, we had we had loads that were to do with bits of your body doing this. So we had one guy who reckons it's your ears working his radar, which I quite like. Another one, I'm not sure about this, saying it's your nasal cavities. Apparently they're as big as an acoustic guitar or something, which. They're not, are they? <laughs> Close, but well, it's I'm not. I'm looking at you and I'm thinking it's quite a big schnozzer, but it's nowhere near an acoustic guitar. It, that ain't no guitar. No. You know, I'm not going to see you come up. That bloke's got a guitar on his face. For a nose. It's rubbish. No, you're not. I know, there's some bizarre I mean, what stuff. they're basically saying, I think what the audience is saying here is that if you were to build a creature that had my bone structure with sort of enormous elbows and Martin Clunes's ears. Looking good. And Daniela Westbrook's nose. Nice touch. <laughs> You could set off some nuclear missiles in North Korea from your house in Birmingham. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we asked you to send in pictures of cars that you or people you know have had a go at modifying. We've got some more. Does anybody want to see them? Yeah. OK. Um, this first one is a Corrado, a VW Corrado. There it is. Have a look at that. Oh! <laughs> Where I'm... was he going? Well, he can't see, I suppose. I mean, where, no, no he doesn't know where he's going with no, that. No, clearly not. It would get you home faster, but I suspect you wouldn't know that you were at home. No. You're sitting in there going, I can only see the, uh, the lipstick. Did handle. he fix the engine to the car? Or the car to the engine? <laughs> uh, now, our search also goes on for the most ludicrous exhaust pipes in Britain, and we've been right. sent uh, this week a photograph of a Renault Clio. Uh, check that out. <laughs> so if you've had your dustbin stolen in the last couple of weeks, Green Clio, check it out. There's your culprit. Can I just say, obviously we had a lot of mail about the stick. Odd one here from Steve Rowland. We have a cat called Stig. So can you please change the name of your racing driver to something other than Stig? Because every time your program on his sleep is disturbed when you mention the Stig's name. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, Stig! <laughs> See those slippers? Pee in them. <laughs> Tell you one thing that's really, really got us going this week. You know, kind of young men, let's call them that. It, it, it tends not to happen with women. Um, I've taken to fitting enormous exhaust pipes on the back of their cars. Have you seen this trend? Yeah. 
Um, well, we were sent a fantastic photograph this week, and they're always on very inappropriate cars, but Generally. check this one out, okay? Citroen. <laughs> what is that? Now, at first we suspected that perhaps he had an organ on the back seat, and he went around playing ecclesiastical music of some sort. But no, I don't think so. I think it'll be the black-eyed peas coming out of the doors, and those really are exhaust. How is that nine on there? Nine I... exhaust pipes. So we were thinking, no one will ever be able to top that. And then somebody sent us this photograph. <laughs> <laughs> now, what is it? If you were following that, you would think, am I behind Sellafield? Yeah, I'd get out of the way. A military brass band. Who'd like to see the car it's attached to? Yes. Yep. <laughs> it's a 1.6-litre Toyota MR2. Now, that was kind of heading the list. And then yesterday, from, I think it's America, check this one out. Look at that! <laughs> one day, somebody is going to drive up that thing and they'll get a big surprise. Another sequence of letters that we've had this week is from children who are ashamed, frankly, of the cars that they're being taken to school in. Mm. There's a chap here, George Howard, he's 14 years old. He says his father takes him to school in a 1992 white Fiat Panda. Oh, no, that's cruel. <laughs> that's not right. He actually says, God has not answered my request for help, no matter how much I ask him. He says, I am so desperate, I even tried sacrificing a small goat. <laughs> See, it's having an effect already. No, this is serious. This has a, a deep sociological effect. It's a short trip from being dropped off in a rubbish car at school to, well, they'll be kicking down the door of your bed, sitting, finding the head in your fridge. Now. There will it's, be. You know, it's, it's... So listen, kids, you know, I know there's a lot of discussion in the newspapers and on TV about the school run, what it should be done in. It's what type of car. That's what matters. George Howard of, um, where's he from? The internet. <laughs> <laughs> George Howard, from the internet, Mr and Mrs Howard, sell the panda. It doesn't have to be expensive or a Ferrari, just not rubbish and embarrassing. Exactly. We'll have a nice exactly. little